In this video, we're going to talk about the intercepts of the graph of an equation. So there are two different types of intercepts that we talk about in coordinate geometry. Uh, there are the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. But intercepts in general, those are the points that lie on the axes. So the intercepts of a graph of an equation are points that lie on the axes. Lie on the axes. And I know it sounds like I'm saying axis really weird, but actually the plural of axis is axes. I don't know what language that got derived from where you switch the I to an E and that makes it plural, but that's the case. So the intercepts, those are the points that lie on the axes. In our geometry, we have two types of intercepts. We have x-intercepts. So x-intercepts of a graph are the uh, points that lie on the x-axis. Points that lie on the x-axis. All x-intercepts have something in common. They all have a common y-coordinate. If you think about a graph, where are our x-intercepts? Well, they're here and here and here and here and here. All of those have a common y-coordinate. Their common y-coordinate is zero. So all x-intercepts are of the form, points that lie on and of the form, They're all of the form a comma zero. So we have some value that, uh, for our x coordinate, but the y coordinate is always zero. If you're asked to find the x-intercepts of a graph and you're given its equation, uh, what that means is that you can substitute in zero for y and then solve for x. So if you're asked to find the x-intercepts of an equation, plug in zero for y, set y equal to zero, and then solve for x. The other type of intercept that we're going to talk about is the y-intercept of a graph. And the y-intercepts of a graph, those are points that lie on the y-axis. Points that lie on the y-axis. So if we go back to my makeshift graph over here, points that lie on the y-axis, there it could be here or here, here or here or up there, uh, all of those points have something in common. All of those points have the same x-coordinate. So we can say that any y-intercept is of the form uh, 0 comma b. That would be how uh, at any y-intercept would be of the form 0 comma b. If you're asked to find the y-intercepts and you're given the equation, what you would want to do is substitute in 0 for x. You would set x equal to 0 to find the y-intercepts. And that's actually what we're going to do right now in these examples. So we're first going to look at the graphs and just let's all keep in mind that I drew these by hand. So the graphs might be imperfect because it's done by hand. Um, so we're going to pretend like they're, they are perfect. Uh, we're going to estimate what the x and y coordinates of the graph are and then we're going to verify algebraically. So we're going to eyeball it and then we're going to see how well our eyeballs really do work. Our first example, we have y equals 2x minus 4. So if we're looking for our x-intercept, where does this line cross the x-axis? It looks like right here at the point 2 comma 0. So we think, we think that that's the x-intercept. We have not verified it yet. We believe the y-intercept is down here at negative 4, so that would be the point 0, negative 4. Now to check each one algebraically, that means we're actually going to use the thing that I kept repeating over and over again to verify. So if we're going to find an x abbreviate to x int, what that means is that we're going to substitute in 0 for y. All x-intercepts have a y-coordinate of 0. When we plug in 0 for y, we get 0 equals 2x minus 4. Now we want to get x by itself, so first I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I end up with 2 equals x, that's the ordered pair, 2 comma 0, that is what I guessed on the graph. Yay! To find the y-intercept, that means that we're going to substitute in uh, 0 for x. So in this case, we go back to our original equation, y equals 2 times 0 minus 4. This one, we're just going to follow order of operations. Multiplication says that 2 times 0 is 0, and then 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So we get y equals negative 4. That's the ordered pair 0, comma, negative 4, right? This is the x-coordinate, which we said was 0. 
y is negative 4, that is what we had over here. So the graph does match the algebra. In our next example, we're given an absolute value equation. Um, if we eyeball our x-intercepts, it looks like there's one right here at 1, 0. It looks like there's another x-intercept. We have two x-intercepts. This one appears to be at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma, 0. And we have one y-intercept where the graph crosses the y-axis here at 0, 1. We want to verify that uh, the graph does represent the actual numbers that we came up with. So to find the x-intercepts, how do we find x-intercepts? We plug in 0 for y. So we say y equals 0. We get 0 equals the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. Okay, this is an absolute value equation for absolute value. First thing we want to do, get the absolute value by itself. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. 2 equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Since the absolute value is equal to something positive, that indicates to us that there are two cases to consider. That means that inside the absolute value could equal to itself, or inside the absolute value could be equal to negative 2. We're going to set up our two cases and solve each one separately. So here we're going to add 3 to both sides. We're going to get x equals 5. Over here we're going to add 3 to both sides. We're going to get x equals 1. Oh. So there's our two x-intercepts. This one's at 5, 0, which is right there. This one is at 1, 0, which is right here. That was the x-intercepts. The next thing it asks us to do is find the y-intercept. The good news about this one is that it will be less work than what we see, so I'm just going to come over here and just write it right here in quadrant 3. So to find the y-intercept, what that means is that we need to substitute in 0 for x. So we're going to say x equals 0. That will give us y equals the absolute value of 0 minus 3 minus 2. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So that would be y equals 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. So we have a y-intercept at 0, 1. So that does confirm that we did uh, have the graph. We were able to read it right from the graph. In this video, we're going to look at a few more examples of finding the intercepts when we're given the equation and the graph. So first, we're going to look at the graph to see if we can determine the intercepts, the x-intercept and the y-intercept, and then we're going to check algebraically with the equation. Looking at our first graph here, it looks like we have an x-intercept over here. Uh, that's where it crosses the x-axis. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that would be the ordered pair 9, 0. And then the y-intercept, it looks like there's one up here at 0, 3, and one down here at 0, negative 3. We're now going to check to see if I'm correct by plugging in to the equation. To find the x-intercept, we plug in 0 for y. We say y equals 0. That would be 0 squared equals 9 minus x. 0 squared is 0. Uh, on the other side, to get x by itself, I need to take away, nope, let's be smart about this. Instead of subtracting 9 from both sides, I could save myself a step by adding x instead. That way x is positive, so I don't have to do anything weird with um, dividing by negative 1. So instead of subtracting 9, I'm going to add x to both sides, and I get x equals 9. x is by itself. That's the ordered pair, 9, 0, which confirms the graph. Uh, to find the y-intercepts, that means we're going to plug in 0 for x. So we would have y squared is equal to 9 minus 0. 9 minus 0 is 9. So y squared is equal to 9. To get the uh, y by itself, I need to take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of the numerical side, I do need to include the plus or minus. So I would say plus or minus the square root of 9. That would give me y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. So there are two y-intercepts. There is one at positive 3 and there is one at negative 3 as shown in the graph here. So our intercepts do in fact match the graph that we have. Looking at letter D, we have y equals 1 over x plus 3. Looking at our graph, oh, hmm, it appears we don't have an x-intercept. So we're going to say maybe no x-intercept. It appears that the graph will never cross the x-axis. So I think maybe perhaps there is no x-intercept. The y-intercept is down here. 
Ooh, looks like it could be it's somewhere in between 0 and 1, closer to 0. Uh, it's going to be 0 and let's just say 0 0.2, 0 0.3, I don't somewhere in there. So this one isn't necessarily exact, okay? Let's verify these results, or in this case, let's find the exact and let's confirm that there is no x-intercept. If there was an x-intercept, then we would plug in 0 for y. So we would say 0 is equal to 1 divided by x plus 3. This is saying when is this ever going to equal 0, and in fact it will never equal 0. Um, if you want to confirm this, you can multiply both sides by that denominator to clear out the denominator. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0. We get 0 equals 1. That is just a false statement. That's not true. So that does confirm there's no x-intercept. Okay, to find the y-intercept and confirm or verify, let's see how close we got. We're going to plug in uh, 0 for x. We get y equals 1 over 0 plus 3. That is 1 third. So we have a y-intercept of a third. That would be 0 comma 1 over 3.